nothing. It's just, uh, you know. What? Well, eight is, uh... Okay, okay, so... <gasps> Underwear. We all know it, and most of us use it in one form or another. It's there to protect us from chafing from our clothes, and to protect our clothes from the gross oils our bodies produce. It's taken many forms over the years, but for many a century, women's underwear looked like this. A shift a smock, an underdress, a chemise, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same thing. And it's an essential part of historical costuming, which is how it landed on my list of makes. Historically, a chemise is made out of natural fibers, usually linen, and this makes it breathable, antibacterial, and it dries quickly. We'll be making this one out of muslin, which is cotton, because it's cheap, and so am I. It has a weave that really makes it look historically accurate. And I have a lot of it in this beige-ish off-white color that I really love. I plan on making a lot more of these in the future in different styles, but for this one we'll be making an Elizabethan style with a square neck. I found a site that has a pattern calculator for this. They also have a corset calculator that Fantastical Follies had great success with. I am 90% sure that I heard someone else mention this site recently. I can't remember who because I watch a lot of YouTube. But anyway, I would recommend this website, so I will put it there, down in the description, plaster it all over the internet, wherever. It seems like a great resource, especially if you are interested in that specific time period. This was a gift from my boyfriend, because what does a girl really want? A bolt of muslin. Wasted. Begin by laying out your fabric and measuring according to the diagram provided by the calculator. My cutting mat made this super easy. Mark your fabric. I used a washable fabric marker. Remove your cat. Then remove your cat again. One more time. Try your best to cut your fabric pieces without accidentally cutting his tail that he insists on flicking around your sewing table. Okay, maybe you should remove him just one more time. I didn't film any of I mean, you didn't miss anything. I marked the other pieces, I might have cut some, you know the drill. For the neckline, you want to mark it out, but not cut it. This is why I didn't use the chalk to mark my fabric. I needed something that wasn't going to come off easily while I manipulated the rest of the fabric. Most of the pieces are rectangles and squares except for the sleeves. They're still pretty simple to cut and because they're a bit loose, they are symmetrical. Both your rectangles for your gores and your squares for your gussets get cut diagonally to form a slew of triangles. And while it is not on the pattern diagram, the instructions include a square for the neck hole. More on that later. Now that I have all my pieces cut, I'm going to serge the edges. I know that's not historically accurate, but it really does save me a lot of time when I don't have to finish all the seams. I pinned my gussets to the sleeves of my chemise and used YouTube magic to sew them in place. Then I pinned my gores, but I don't know if my magic ran out or if this only works with sleeves. Anyway, I had to do it the old-fashioned way. The gusseted sleeves then get pinned to the gored body. Wait, no. And 
Also note to how I pinned them first. This is why we double check before we sew our final stitches, kids. Once these were together, I felt fully ready for my photo shoot with Lydia Dietz. This video is brought to you by water. Smooth, refreshing water. It flows in beautiful abundance, bringing satisfaction to all who consume its glory. It asks for nothing, wants for nothing, but to bring hydration to the world and those who seek it. Okay, so this isn't actually sponsored by water, but let's face it, this video wouldn't have been possible without it. At this point, the instructions say how to cut the neck hole, and I'm a bit confused. I'm glad I read ahead because the pattern doesn't have the square described in this step. So if you're using this pattern, you need a square. Not a big deal if you didn't cut one before and you cut one now, but like why wait till now to cut the neck hole? I think that's a bit weird. Anyway, your square is supposed to be an inch and a half. Shoot. It's supposed to be an inch and a half bigger on all four sides. And I just did an inch and a half bigger. So my square isn't big enough. Okay, let me think about this. So my square is eight by nine. I think I just have to add another inch and a half to both sides. 11 by 12. I cut it wrong anyway <laughs> for what I was trying to do. So I cut nine inches by 10 and a half inches. An easier way to do this would say, just add three inches to your square. Add three inches to your square. Add three inches to your square. Honestly, I don't know what I'm complaining about. This made the process easier. Lay your square on your neck hole markings, measure in a couple inches for seam allowance, and cut. My rotary cutter is the real MVP here. Keep it pinned because you sew it just like that. A neat trick when you're changing direction while sewing is to leave the needle down in the fabric, lift the presser foot, turn the fabric, and put the presser foot back down. It's simple, and it makes your stitching seamless. Well, not seamless like actual seams. You want those. Whenever you have corners of fabric being turned in or out, you'll have to snip the corners to be able to accomplish it. Observe! As I get a brilliant idea to deviate from the pattern and I proceed to snip too much corner. Why stop there when I can snip the corners entirely off the garment? At an angle, no less. Basically, my idea was to sew the neckline so that there would be a line showing rather than tucking it all inside. It wasn't a bad idea, I just decided to do it too late in the planning process and didn't really know what I was doing. Okay, so that didn't work. I just folded it over. I might have to do another line of stitching though, because it wants to do this. God, my corners are a little messed up because I tried that. It really doesn't matter because the collar is something I can always add or change later. It's more the rest of the shimmies that's important for me to get right, and I mean, it's looking right. And now is the time for the final step. You gotta put this together. Let's do it. Do you wanna be a YouTuber? Do you want to learn the craft of videography from a professional with over 500 subscribers? Join my masterclass where you too can learn how to create quality footage such as this. Or this. Or my personal favorite, this. Space is limited. Sign up now. We're in tight quarters. I have my assistant. I made this over a week ago and I had to wash it to get the marker out and... Are you making biscuits on my pants? Anyway, I had to wash it to get the marker out because it's that type of marking pen. And my corners that I said were kind of wonky because I tried that thing and it didn't work out. They're all frayed and they look awful. And I thought about just... It's gotta move around again. Okay. Whenever you're ready, your highness. I thought about just fixing them up well enough for the video, 
but then I thought I probably will never fix them if I don't do it for the video. And I thought maybe you all would like to see how it's supposed to be made. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're going to fix it, make it the way it's supposed to be made, I hope the mic picked that up. He's very cute and cuddly when he wants to be. Anyway, seam rip this and make another square and put it on there the way the instructions say to without deviating. Okay, no, that's less cute, okay? Okay, let's get started. This time was a bit more difficult since the rest of the chemise was already together. The order that the directions have you construct this are very simple. Great beginner project. Okay, so just snip the inside corners. Fold, fold again, and pin it in place. Just be careful that the cat doesn't get stuck with a pin when he decides to start fuzzling you while you work. Listen, I know there's a lot of cat footage in this video, but what can I say? He's got main character energy. After much futzing, I got these two to work quite nicely, but I can't get the same results on this side. It feels like it isn't sewn correctly. There's just a lot of gather there. So, I guess we're just going to do the best we can. And once I fix that, it'll be time for the reveal. Well, this was probably my most successful one day make. It was a little more than one day, but if I followed the instructions, yeah. So don't be like me, follow the instructions. And the fit is perfect, I didn't change anything. If I had to change anything, it probably would have been from my own shoddy measurement taking and not from the calculator itself. I think the calculator was spot on, like I did add some inches because I like long sleeves. I didn't really need to do that, so they are kind of long, longer than I probably would have liked, but that's okay. Overall, I'm really happy with this project. It isn't something, unfortunately, I think I'm gonna find all that much use for. I do like the color, but after I made it, I realized that I can't wear this with like a formal Renaissance gown because it will look dirty. For those, I have to wear a white chemise, so this really is only going to work for something kind of worker class. I was having a hard time finding things to wear with it once I made it, but mostly this was just a, a test, and it was a successful test, and it was a cheap test because it was muslin. But overall, I am super satisfied with this project, and I hope you are super satisfied with your project. If you would like to see more aesthetic and historical sewing content, and if you want to see more UFO roulette, please subscribe to this channel. We just hit 500 subscribers, and we'd love to have you along for the journey. Until next time. <laughs> hey, no. I try to film, and this guy back here puts a jingle ball in one of my shoes and decides to play with it as I'm filming. I shut off the camera, and he stops. Go figure. Cats, man. He was
was all like, I'm on a quest. I was like, you're on a quest? I'm on a quest, buddy. And it's called getting my drink on, am I right? I mean, we really don't get paid enough for this job. It's dangerous. Did you hear Dave got hit with the poison darts? Yeah, last week. No, no, he's okay. He's okay. Uh, it turns out they were some kind of shrinking potion. Yeah. His wife's not too happy, though, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, shoot, someone's coming. <laughs>